right. Jake Blanchard is on this episode of the High Value Man Conversation. Jake is a friend, a brother. He's a graduate of the Modern Day Night Project from class 001. I mean, we're talking like OG in the house. Uh, Jake has got an amazing podcast, a Jake Blanchard podcast, 126 episodes so far, roughly. Um, he is a jujitsu purple belt. Uh, he is a savage servant, all around amazing human being. He's got a consulting business I know that we'll dive into as well. But he's been a great friend, a great brother along this process, along this journey. And uh, I'm just so excited to have you on, man. Well, Aaron, thanks for having me, man. It's a, it's an honor and it's, it's super cool uh, to see what you're building here. And uh, listening to a couple of your episodes, man, I'm, I'm so fired up uh, to be on the show. Yeah, dude. Yeah. And then, and like I said, you definitely inspired me when you launched your podcast. Uh, you're not too long ago, I got to be on as a guest. And it was just cool to see that you can take an idea because our first conversation, I know we'll get into that. Our first conversation was pretty pivotal in the trajectory of where your life is at now. And I think it's amazing because your life has inspired the lives of so many others, but we'll, we'll get into all those details, man. But download me real quick, download the listeners. Who are you? What do you do? And and give me your best. My name is Jake Blanchard. I live just outside of Boise, Idaho and kind of a small town called Middleton. Mm. A couple thousand people out here, about a 45 minute drive to Boise. I do own a management consulting firm. Uh, I spent the better part of eight or nine years carrying a bag um, as a traveling consultant, working mostly in the healthcare space. Uh, and then over the last four years or so, or three and a half years, however long since I went to the project and woke up, um, being a the business wake my, up, <laughs> the wake up, uh, restarting my independent consulting practice and working with uh, different large organizations in things like strategic planning, uh, project management, supply chain risk mitigation, and some of the nerdy things that I've been into for the last 15 years or so. Married uh, a couple of kids, beautiful children, a nine year old boy, seven year old girl. Mm. Um, and uh, yeah, and, and, the- and the marriage thing. I know we're going to pull on this thread a little bit, but just want to give the listeners something to listen to. Uh, how long have you been with your lady? I've been with Megan, it'll be 19 years in January. 19 and- years in high school sweetheart, right? High school sweethearts. And then uh, we had just celebrated last month was 13 years of marriage. Wow, man. I got lucky so 13. <laughs> I, <laughs> best years yet. I got yeah. so many questions on that. I know our listeners have a ton of questions on that because we're talking about how do you manage it all, keeping the harmony with business, parenting, relationship, prioritizing, all that stuff. And I know that there's a season that you were in when you weren't juggling it so well. You were like a white belt in jujitsu, just getting choked out all the time, like oh. just getting tapped out left and right. Take us, take us to that point. Take us to where, you know, before I knew this current Jake 2.0. Gosh, we met in, was it 2018 or 2019 was the first year? 20, 2019. 2019. So um, I had, wow, this is, this is a lot to think about. So in, in 2013, I had an opportunity to go work in Southern California and I had left the health system I was working for and I had started to reach my dream job of being Mm -hmm. a consultant. Every single week, I'm getting on an airplane from Boise to Los Angeles. And then I'm flying back um, on Thursday nights. It puts a lot of strain on on the wife and I. And then three days after I quit the job to take this traveling consultant job, we learned that my wife was pregnant with our first child. Mm. So I had just quit a job. And then three days later, (laughs) Hey, I'm going to be traveling four to five days a week for the foreseeable future, the next uh, 12 uh, to 18 months. Mm -hmm. Uh, And that was a lot because I realized I was going to miss a lot about the pregnancy and those kinds of things. But we both had college loans. So I was willing to go and and pick up the sword and shield and go out and do it. The thing that I was not ready for, um, and I was in grad school at the time too. So I was like, I'm full-time grad student at ASU, traveling consultant uh, (laughs) and pregnant wife at home. Uh, That stress, 2013, 2014, the things that I was missing out on, not being home, not feeling like I was supporting my wife, all the shame and guilt mm. and self-doubt that I was feeling. I was making great money and I was paying off our undergraduate college loans. I was achieving my purpose, um, but at the detriment to my health. I gained mm. 35 pounds during that experience. I kind of got up to 240 and then I would shrink back down to 220 and get back up to 240 and shrink back down to 220 and okay. made some half-hearted efforts at weight loss. Between the ears, I was I was just starting to be a head case. I was drinking a lot. I was just sitting in hotel bars, making small talk and conversation and not really living for my family. Um, mm. I saw my son for about 70 days his first year. On the wow, plane. man. And uh, I I dealt with a lot of guilt around that. It also stirred up a lot of feelings uh, for me 
my dad was in the oil field when I was younger. He was he was working three on, one off, two on, two off kind of work. And I had sworn to myself that I would not do something like that because I would be around. And here I was, um, basically self fulfilling prophecy, <laughs> wow. doing doing that exact thing. Um, I quit that job with nine months left on my contract right after my son turned one, I took a huge pay cut to go work a safe consulting role for another firm, which was below my level of intellect. And that also created a lot of frustration for me for halting my career trajectory. I felt Mm -hmm. like all that time that I spent was for naught because I wasn't parlaying that into the next thing. And I spent about a year or so in a real deep disconnected state, disconnected with my wife, disconnected with my child, angry all the time and lashing out. You know, when you talk about passive aggressive male, I was, I was the passive aggressive male. I was the guy with no physical outlets. It's brewing beer in the garage and just yelling uh, over nothing over. Okay. Before we, I want to, I want to just anchor this for just a little bit because stop me anytime. Yeah, because you because you are not that guy anymore. You have such a good, healthy outlet for your masculine energy. You're a leader. I know what a great father and husband you are, and a good friend, good brother, and amazing business person. But this time, from 2013 to 2000, roughly 19, 18, you know, when the light bulbs came on, you are in this kind of spiral, right? Because you're not yeah. doing the thing you really know you should be doing, which is leading at home at first. You're not really being the example that you know you want to be. You're seeing in the mirror that you're modeling your father in a lot of ways. You're chasing the money, but you're not chasing and pursuing your wife. You got this kid at home. There's probably tension on the relationship. Physical body is deteriorating, drinking, going to vices. I imagine there's all the other stuff that the guys that we get into when we're feeling out of control. Okay. We try to control ourselves, masturbation, pornography, dyspnexia, and maybe, I don't know if there was any other women or anything like that, but all this other sure. stuff, right? You know, so we're just, we build up this like resentment, anger, and then it's the victim vomit. The victim vomit is the, you're the reason I'm here. Pissed off, angry, frustrated, irritated at everybody other than the dude in the mirror. Yeah, a hundred percent. And then also privately, the epiphany would hit me that it was me, mm. but that, that feeling would just sit around for a little bit. Like I knew, I knew that I had a perspective that my operating system was not, it wasn't right. Like yeah. I was just so caught up. So um, I ended up to, to get closer to my son, something I, I just regretted was just that first year I was back from traveling so much. I just didn't feel connected to my son. Mm. So I went to therapy. That's really what started my journey is having those conversations and understanding that there were some things uh, in my childhood that I was not completely over. Mm. Right. And a lot of it was just my relationship with my mother and my relationship in some degree with my father and some with my brother as well. And sure. being able to talk about those things. And, you know, I met, I've made heads or tails of it now. Like I kind of understand. I don't, I don't point blame. I understand people were in the state that they were in. They said the things that they said. I've accepted mm. the past. But at the time, I was having a really hard time doing that. And also, yeah. in this period of time in my life, I stopped talking to my parents. I spent three oh. years completely, basically cut off from the time that my son was born until about two or three years later, which was something that, you know, I talk to them on a regular basis now. Um, but at that time, it just wasn't right for us. And so yeah. I was dealing with all this stuff, man. And, and, and the <laughs> gaslight on my wife and to your point earlier like the victim vomit like it just sending it all out on her um you know her body was changing as a result of having children she stopped working full-time a job that she absolutely loved uh and enjoyed and never saw herself being a Mm full-time stay-at-home mother and she decided to make that sacrifice uh for our family i was gone so often traveling for that one job i was making great money on but then i ended up traveling all the time for this other job that (laughs) I I wasn't even making close to what I was making before. And so I was, I went from 45 to 48 weeks a year of travel to about 30. Let me ask you something. So, so so the, the therapy, because that's one thing a lot of dudes don't talk about, man. That's the thing a lot of, what what was the catalyst to be like, you know what? I need to start working on some of this shit stuff's coming up. Man, this is so hard to say. Um, So my wife left me with my son and she was out and about and he's crying and the rage that I felt inside as if he was like crying at me. Mm. Like, and the fact that I had been doing my best for like an hour to help him. And I was, I was not able to soothe him in any way. Mm. This like deep disconnection 
um, with my ability to parent and the guilt that I had for not really being there for that first year and changing my fair share of diapers and getting those those, you know, nightly snuggles in every night, smelling his little head and all those things. Like all of that, dude, it bubbled up and I'm just sitting there and I just, I felt, I felt rage to the extent that I had to put him in his crib and I had to walk out of the room and I am, I'm, you know, literally crying, screaming, like Mm. I'm just so paralyzed in the inability to navigate my own life. And I realized that I just had this, when I started to calm down a little bit, I mean, obviously I, (laughs) thankfully got out of the room and you know, started to take inventory. And I realized that maybe this had something to do uh, with childhood and mm-hmm. maybe I should go and talk to a professional about it. I talked to my wife and she was very encouraging. And she's like, Hey, by the way, uh, if you'd been listening, I had been suggesting this and you'd been yelling at me for suggesting it. Um, so yes, it's a great idea. Go out, go for mm-hmm. it uh, and, and go find the right person. It took me a couple of different counselors to meet and, and find the right person. But I spent uh, the better part of eight months uh, on a weekly basis with an individual. And, and we started to unpack some of that you know, unroot, if you will, some of that trauma and make heads or tails of that situation and and give me an opportunity to have a conversation with that younger self and Mm. understand that I was not necessarily the person to blame Mm. part of that circumstance. That was healing in a way because it allowed me to start moving forward and be honest about the situation I was in at that point in time which started to cascade into things like weight loss and professional development and personal development and going out and finding wise words from smart people and just being inquisitive. But it took a number of years for me to get to the point where I kept falling back in these valleys Mm -hmm. and I would like pull myself up just to fall back down and I couldn't find consistency in my personal evolution. And I, and I think that that's where you, uh, and the modern day night project at least come in for me because about three or four years ago, when I, when I went through that program, that was the kind of the defining moment for me to put myself in a position where I have to face all of it at once. Mm -hmm. Violently, violently, and then make a choice um, about how I want to live my life and move forward. Yeah. And it's, it's crazy. And I want to build a little bit of a crescendo to before we get to the project, because your transformation within that 75 hours was insane. And, and I know, you know, this, I know you feel, I don't know, remember what moment it was exactly, but there was like, there was this, um, and as you talk about this hurt inner child, you, I, we can all picture because we all experience that every man's got a scared, hurt little boy inside him, man. If they don't know how to reparent that version of themselves, it ends up lashing out, causing problems, self-destructing, self-sabotaging in every single capacity. And so did I commend you for speaking about up about therapy and counseling? Every dude needs it in some capacity. Like we need it. We need to be able yeah. to talk about our feelings. We're emotionally constipated as we're hardwired. And if we didn't have a good modeling from our parents, mom or dad, all those feelings get stuffed in a little box. And we're like, you know what? I'm not going to deal with these until I have to deal with these. And it's typically when the house is on fire. Absolutely. Um, and then, you know, to your to your point, we can dive into the project whenever you want. But uh, my my turning point was that 33 degree ba- baptism. <laughs> we go through <laughs> that, co- that cold bath, man. That, that mm. literally, you know, dunking your head under the water, having that time in the cold hold, pushing through something like that after all the things that you've endured for the hours before that, it mm-hmm. really was a, a a pivot point. You and I had a nice conversation uh, yeah. right directly after that uh, yeah. about my leadership skills and abilities with the with the team. And uh, yeah, that was that was when I started to really have faith in the fact that that living a modern day night lifestyle was possible for me. Yeah. 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 I, we talk about this with every project class. It's our favorite part, all the instructors. And if you come back in cadre, you know, the feeling right. when you see the guys come in, there's this deadness in their eyes. Cause they've just been going through life with just doing the best you can, but white knuckling it. Most of the men that come to the project, they are struggling. They're suffering in some capacity. They're not connected to their, either the business, their fulfillment, their life. Like they're on this edge of like, something's got to drastically change. So there's this desperation in the beginning, hour zero, there's pain. By like hour 35, hour 40, the flip has switched. And there's this ferocity in the eyes of all these men. You cannot break them, cannot yeah. break them. It is fucking savage. And then now that they, don't, they know they can turn it on, they can turn it on any point, whenever they want. And the guys that continue to do the work, like Jake, that continue to stack the wins, continue to climb the mountains, continue to push and continue to get back on the mat, like level your, your life is leveled up. 
significantly just in the last three and a half, four years since I've seen, at least from the social media perspective. Oh. I mean, your jujitsu, your game is insane. Your business is insane is, is doing way great. Your podcasting skills, leadership skills, communication, all of it. And it's yeah. fucking, it's profound, man, because it's a decision that was made. Yeah, absolutely. And you brought up jujitsu as well, which is something I hope we get a chance to talk about. But yeah. uh, one of the things I maybe missed in setting up this journey is when I got back from being gone every single week. About a year later, when I started this therapy process, I was really open to finding a new hobby that was helpful to me. Mm. I did martial arts as a young man. I did some kickboxing. I did some uh, Keishin Khan, Shudderayu, like karate. And uh, I found a friend of mine that I was working with saw a sticker on my laptop uh, from the company on it. Uh-huh. And then we started somehow talking about Joe Rogan. And then we somehow started talking about jujitsu. And he's like, you know, I train. He's like, I'm a blue belt at a, at a local gym. You should come. Mm. And just him saying that. Mm. And then me being open to saying yes. A yeah. man looking at me saying, hey, I, this thing has value to me. Mm-hmm. And I've gotten a lot out of this. And there's a great community and a great subculture here. And there's a great instructor. Um, mm-hmm. Why don't you come join us? And I showed up and then I got I got hooked, man. It was right. Uh, it was October 1st, uh, 2015. And my daughter was born shortly after that. And so I look at her life as mm-hmm. my jujitsu journey. And as she yeah. grows, I grow uh, in, in the sport and in the discipline. That's dope, man. Yeah, that's beautiful. It is uh, it is a beautiful martial art. You learn everything you need to learn about leadership and masculinity and modesty and courtesy and courage and all that on the mat. There's so many life lessons in that. Definitely bouncing around here, brother. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I love it. I love it. And that, that that's the great thing about this. You know, two podcasters, we're going to shoot the shit. Okay, so we're back 2013 on and you're, you're in this pit, you're in this valley. Yeah. You have this realization, you're spending back time with the kid and you you have this moment, this beautiful moment really is. It's a beautiful moment where you're facing the future of, of the young man you're going to be building by the decisions that you've made. And you realize I'm not fully equipped for this, but I'm going to find out how to get equipped. And yeah. so you go on the journey, you go on the personal development journey, you get into therapy and counseling, you learn some amazing tools. It also opens up the door for jujitsu. And I believe really when we start opening the first door to personal development, all the other doors start opening up. Right. And so jujitsu came along and then I imagine relationships got better. You started losing weight, building muscle, stacking some wins. And then the project. Then the project. And and the project really came about because I went from a 242 pounds at my biggest and I got under 190 uh, and sustaining that for a while. So great, you know, 50 pound weight loss, keeping Uh it off consistently. What I realized, however, that I may have done the physical work. I had not done the work between the ears. Truly, Mm -hmm. I had not truly understood how to get past some of the things that I was stuck in. And I had gotten complacent. I'm not going to lie. That job that I took was a pretty easy job for me. I just started being stagnant professionally. And then I was Mm -hmm. mad. I was just so mad that my situation wouldn't change, but I would not step into the driver's seat and make a decision about changing course. And (laughs) and, uh, it just got to the point where... Um, my wife and I were having the most difficult time in our relationship, uh, to be completely honest. I mean, I'll never forget the number of times that we argued, we yelled, we screamed, we were just moving houses at the same time. She did not like me and I did not like her for a good couple of months. I just to be completely honest. What kept you guys united? You know, we grew up together, man. I mean, we we really took a chance on each other. We pushed all the chips in at each other at 18 years old. We we moved to Idaho at 18. We've I've never lived with anyone else. Mm. Never been with anyone else. Like she was the she's my person. Mm. And I know who she is. And she knows who I am. She knows my potential and I know her potential. We both were not living up to it. And we just we were taking the easy route on everything, including communication, because raising kids is hard and traveling every month and not being in a rhythm or every week and not being in a rhythm is hard. And instead of the situational awareness to say, Hey, by the way, our life is just really hard right now. And in order to meet that where it is, we're going to have to level up in our ability to communicate and be on the same page and connect with one another and make sure that we're sharing the experience of life together. We just started drifting, man. And it was challenging. And we we really did consider splitting. Uh, We we had that conversation a number of times. I found myself looking at uh, other women out there and, and, you know, having thoughts that I didn't think that I would have. Mm. Um, It's it's a weird position to be in. 
Um, and I just didn't want that part of it. I wanted to get back. I wanted to show up because I know the thing that woke me up was her looking at me and saying, like, you're complaining about fucking everything. Absolutely everything you have a problem with. Oh, Absolutely shit. Everything that I say, everything that I do, I can't do anything right. Oh, she I lit think. me up, man. She goes, hey, I have been in this house. I stopped my career. I do all that. Like, you don't even pick up after yourself. You don't even step up and take the trash. You're not even like cleaning the cars and doing all this. stuff. she goes, you just think that I'm your personal fucking servant. And every time that you come in from a trip, work trip, you think I should roll the red carpet out for you and shine your fucking shoes, selecting and how you're being a dad. And you like doing all the fun stuff and none of the hard stuff. And she like, she lit me up, dude. And, uh, I was like, man, something's got to change. And, and at the same time, uh, you know, uh, my friend from jujitsu, Matt Schneider, uh, mm -hmm. had moved down uh, to California to be one of the instructors for the Modern Day Night Project and had made a simple Facebook post about, you know, hey, what are there spots to level up as a man? Yeah. And I saw that and I just reached out to Matt and said, sure. Like, I, I, yeah, who do I have to talk to? Like, I, I'm in that. <laughs> you're, you're speaking to my heart. So all of this happened. It's perfect storm opportunity inside the relationship. You started to level up in one area, yeah. but then backsliding in some other. And you're just, you're kind of slinking, right? And the the project 001, like there was no highlight reel. It was me, Bedros, Ray, Steve, and Matt. We're just talking about it on social media, but we have nothing to talk about other than like, hey, we're going to do this thing that's 75 hours it's going to got, got these five guys in it. It's going to be intense and you're probably not going to sleep, not going to eat. But like, that was it. Like there was no, there was no cool camera shit. There was nothing. It was literally like, Hey, this is what we're, this is a mission. We want to help you level up in your faith, your fitness, your family, your finances, because we know that we needed this. Yeah. And so that, that was how we sold class one. We had 12 guys, 14 guys that came through. 12 graduated uh, 12 uh, 12 came through 10 graduated. Yeah, that's right. That's right. And um, so we, we're on a call. I was running one of other, uh, Bedros's other companies, True Lean. And uh, we're in year one of that. And we had this passion project to start the project. And so B's like, yeah, we can do this, but you got to make the main thing your main thing. So you're going to sell for the project on the side of your desk. And so I'd run off to the conference room whenever there was a sales call, someone was interested and I'd hop on and I'd talk about the project. And the same thing, I was like, this is class one, like this is the inaugural class, but here's what I know that we can do, even though there's no highlight reel, there's nothing else, you know, it's, it's going to be badass and it's going to be savage. But we got on a call and I remember this call distinctly because there was a call and there was an email. There was like this back and forth between you and I. Do you remember a, a lot oh, of this? Oh yeah. Oh, I, re I remember it for sure. If you don't mind, share from your perspective, because I think it's pivotal. We had a call. You started asking me. I mean, you're you're pretty straightforward, man. Like, hey, we're really gonna drive value for the individuals who come. There's no guarantee that you're gonna get through this on the other side. It just all depends on the way that you show up. You have to be physically ready to be able to participate in this event. But the way that we have it and who we're working with have it designed, that is a transformative experience that you're going to be able to get out of it as much as you put in it. And I mm -hmm. said, That sounds great. And you said, Hey, have you read Man Up? And I was like, Yeah, like I've been reading, you know, ever since, you know, I've bought it a week ago and I'm like halfway through and you're like, oh, fantastic. So you kind of get at least part of what we're talking about here. Well, let's make a commitment. And I said, yeah, yeah, I'm going to sign up for this thing, man. I'm going to sign. And then uh, I get off the phone and then I go sit in the hot tub and I'm hanging out with my wife. And then I'm like, no, I just talked, I talked myself out of it. And I was like, you know, I could just like read some of these books and just like, I'm just going to give myself a shot before I go spend all this money on this unproven thing. I just, mm -hmm. I, I don't know. I like that guy that I talked to. He seemed all right. But like, I'm so <laughs> I sent you this long, really bitchy email mm -hmm. <laughs> um, that had a lot to do with just like, you know, not the right time and place and Man, I can't remember exactly everything I said. I don't remember everything either, but I, I, the version of you that wrote that email, I mean, like it was, it was Pam. It was, it was passive aggressive man coming out because I think oh, anytime yeah. we, we face, we face a new obstacle of becoming a better version of ourselves, all the old junk tries to hold us back. And there, I just remember reading it and being like, who the fuck is this weak dude that I'm, that is sending this email? Because it wasn't the same guy on the phone. It wasn't the same guy on the phone. And I and I don't remember the exact you know, sequence happened after, but I do remember I challenged you after that email. I says, where else is this showing up, man? That's where, what got me. Yeah, that's, where else is this showing up in your life? You know, where where you go all in, you say you're committed, and then you fucking pull out last minute, you change your thing because it gets inconvenient, gets hard, or gets uncomfortable. And there was there was like some tension, but you're like, fuck, you see me. 
You yeah. see exactly where I'm at. And there was a shift and you came on board. Even during the project, though, there, there was one moment. There was one moment when I that little bit showed up. And he was only there for like 10 minutes. And then the rest of the project, Jake Blanchard was a fucking like beast. Beast. It is amazing what happens when you show up. And here we are, you know, four years later. Life's good. Business is good. Relationship is good. What else is winning in your life right now? Yeah. So, you know, I left the project, um, it was just July of 2019. And I had some things to think about. I had already lost the weight, right? I had just done a really tough physical challenge, improved myself. So I was working out hard in the gym. That was check. Um, but I needed to go prove to myself that I could go back as an independent consultant, right? Stop working for this other organization, relaunch my consulting firm, scratch my entrepreneurial itch, make my own fucking schedule, be there for my kids, make sure I'm there at all the games, make sure I'm there at all their events uh, and stop having to uh, trade time for money in that way. Uh, and I relaunched my consulting firm by December of that year. And I've been, uh, you know, 4X my income just like that um, by finding great clients to work with and busting my ass and leveraging the skill set that I always knew that I had, but was frustrated that I was not applying mm. <laughs> for whatever reason. Yeah. You know, it's uh, about a year later, I launched a podcast to scratch an itch of talking to interesting people like yourself uh, and, and other guests and on, on the Jake Blanchard podcast and learning more about mindset and motivation and how people live their life and um, trying to acquire collective knowledge and being curious and interested in what people are doing. Um, my wife has undergone her own re renaissance. I'm so proud of her for the things that she's doing. She went back and decided to go into business for herself and um, learned how to so. do permanent makeup like eyebrows okay. and eyeliner. And then she actually does tiny tattoos. So she does Sick. fine line tattooing. So she tattoos my legs on our date night. Like we, we were having so much fun with this and she's doing great. I mean, she has her shop is like a mile from our house. She has a perfect schedule with the kids. She's blooming again as becoming in her own individual. And I think mm. that that structure, like her starting to regain some ground on her individuality because she lost so much because she gave yeah. so much to myself and the kids for the last nine years and her starting to bloom into her own individuality. It's just a beautiful thing to see. So we're in a great place right now, man. That's awesome. That's a, a beautiful season you're in right there, man. And it's well-earned, well-earned for a guy that is truly deciding to make that yeah. his life. It's you know, a, and it, it, it comes down to a decision. Yeah, and it's not. It, it, obviously, it's not without work, and it's all, uh, definitely not without setbacks. I mean, we have our disagreements, uh, we have our you know frustrations here and there, but we're both so committed to talking through them. And she mm. knows that she has to work on some of her delivery of information at times, uh, and the way that she frames things. And I have to stop being so damn sensitive. I have such Ooh. an operation default, you know, or excuse me, an operational default for just sensitivity. Like, I'm mm. like, what's that mean? Like, why are you saying it that way? You didn't use the exact words I had in my head. You're hurting my feelings. Like, sometimes that stuff comes out, man. And I'm just, I have to just, hey, you know, that sign you got behind you, stop Pam. Like, that's uh -huh. what you got to do. <laughs> you just, you got to recognize that you're being, you're being a whiny little bitch about stuff. For no oh reason. man. Uh, spend a minute on this, man. Cause I, I relate to that. I, I'm a sensitive little snuggler. I can't help that. Sometimes I get my yeah. feelings hurt. And uh, it sounds like you have a very independently strong woman. And that's, that's yeah. awesome because that, that helps us grow as men. You know, that challenge that we get to overcome on a regular basis helps us grow into the character that we know that we need to be. How do you talk yourself through? As long as you and Megan have been together, 19 years, high school sweethearts, how do you talk yourself into your own presence, your own self-sovereignty and not go down the sensitive Sally route and get your feelings hurt? I try to start from a place that she genuinely likes to spend time with me and loves me because I have a very hard time accepting other people's love, including hers. 19 years later, for some reason, there's a part of me that thinks the reason that she's with me is charitable. And I don't know why. Sometimes I'm just not connected to the fact that she has elected to spend her life with me. Mm -hmm. What a big decision to make. How valuable she must think I am to have made that decision to be with me in that way. And I underestimate that aspect of her. And, and, and I don't know why that is, why I couldn't attribute or, or why sometimes mm -hmm. I, I lose focus of that huge fact that yeah, she man. picked me too. And so anytime that I center that, I, I try to assume positive intent. 
You know, she's not one of these people that is going to try to make me feel bad on purpose. She never has been. But for years, that's the story that I told myself. So then mm. like sometimes when she says things, I think she's coming from a place of, of being mean. When mm. really she's just saying her truth. Mm-hmm. And her truth hurts sometimes. And I've got to arm her up a little bit and say, why can't she have an opinion about shit? Right. Why why wouldn't I let her do that? So that's that's usually when I get spun up a little bit is when when I get my feelers hurt because she has a strong opinion about something I've said or Dude. my inconsistency. She's I mean, she's she's the person who calls me out Bro. this morning. This morning. Literally this morning, I got up at five o'clock this morning. Okay, the alarm went off. I got up out of bed. My my phone's away from the bed. I get up, I turn my phone off, mm. I turn a light on, and then I get back into bed. And she's like, "Hey, you're already up." She's like, "Get your ass up!" And like, "Let's go." She turns the lights on and she's ready to rock. I'm like, "Oh no!" I said, "I just I said I got a headache and blah blah blah." And she's like, "God, you're such a bitch!" Like, <laughs> <laughs> And, uh, and you know, my feelings got hurt. I, I mean, she didn't say it exactly like that, but like, that's the way that she started talking to me. Uh-huh. And I, and I realized like in that moment, like, oh man, I am, I'm slowly eroding her respect for me being wow. a man of my word. Right. Wow. And again, it's unintentional. I've had a long, you know, long couple of days. I've been a little sleep deprived. There's a lot of excuses to it. But mm-hmm. the reality is, if I really cared about it as much, like getting to sleep, I would have gone to bed earlier and I would have woke up at 5 a.m. and I would have got out of bed and I would have attacked my day. That shame, having to share life with somebody and having them see you operate and see you not necessarily at your worst, but not operating at your maximum, mm-hmm. there's some shame associated with that. And guilt. I try to, yeah, guilt. And I deflect guilt. that back to her and say, why are you saying the thing that's true? Yeah. How dare you speak truth against me? (laughs) How dare you? (laughs) How dare you say the true thing? I love that. I, you know, it's, I I love your self-awareness, man. I love your vulnerability, Jake, because that's such a a key skill that men have to be able to develop and have to be able to have if they really want to live the life that they know they deserve. And you have to be able to face the hard truths of where you are lacking, not showing up and with consistency and integrity. And there's no better place than at home. Our, our woman will point out to us all the areas that we are lacking in and they do it because their expectation and their what they really deserve is for them to be with a modern day night be with an example of masculinity and they don't have to settle is a thing i love that just from a framework of they don't have to settle i chose one that is uh, certainly never going to let me lower my expectation for self in, in any capacity or the expectation for the relationship and the cool thing about that and the reframe is you're right I get to level up. I get to be bigger, better, stronger, and more consistent because that's how we really get to change the world. Well, and and it works both ways. And Mm -hmm. she has goals as well. And I hold her accountable to those things in a loving way or to the best of my ability in a loving way. We know that we're best together and moving. We have goals. We have things. We're talking about it all the time. We're aligned. We have to walk at the same pace. Because things don't work when I walk too fast. Things don't work when I walk too slow and, and vice versa. Like we, we have to do this thing together in order to get where we want to be. And that doesn't mean that we have to give up our individuality and all those things. It just means that we need to be on the same page about our life's mission and purpose. And it's got to overlap on that Venn diagram more often than not. All right, I got two questions for you because I want to respect your time, brother, family man. And I appreciate you again taking time in the middle of the week for this. One, what are you most excited about? What are you most looking forward to that's coming up for you? Um, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu competition. I've got, uh, I've been dealing with some knee injuries for the better part of three or four years on mm-hmm. and off. And uh, I finally got back into competition recently. I did my first uh, pay-per-view ever on Fight TV. Sick. Um, yeah, I was in a uh, purple belt super fight against a uh, pretty savage local um, Idaho competitor. I won my match, three minutes, rear naked choke. So I was oh. excited about that. Yeah. And uh, that's, uh, you know, seven years in the sport and uh, being as fit as I am and feeling as good as I am, I think I'm going to try to search out more of those. And so I've okay. got uh, maybe some opportunities here in the spring uh, to do more feature matches. And uh, yeah, that's that's what I'm excited about right now. That's what I'm kind of skating toward. I, I feel healthy enough at this point in time to do that. That's dope, man. That's that's amazing. Good on you. Keep climbing those mountains, man. Next question, last question is a man of value is finish that statement. Riff on it. Yeah, a man of value. Um, I think I think one a, a man of value is someone who has put their ego aside and is willing to 
listen to others in order to give and to serve and to show up in a way that makes you proud and makes others proud. I think the hardest thing that I've had to go through is defining like what is good enough, what is valuable, what is what you know, like when am I going to feel okay? When am I going to feel satisfied about being who I am? And I've had to shed a lot of that that ego around that and ask questions and learn and to have conversations like this and conversations like you've had with me. I, I know I called you about six or seven months ago. Maybe maybe less than that. And I was mm-hmm. kind of in a, a frustrated situation and I had so much ego associated with it. And I thought I was doing the right thing and all this other stuff. And then, I mean, you kind of put me back in my place a little bit. And then I've gone out since then and then given. I've mm. given so much more. I've gone out, I've, I've learned something and I said, okay, I have this insight. I have this ability. I'm going to go out and I'm going to go give in a different way, in a way that mm-hmm. satisfies me and doesn't make me resentful for the world or doesn't make me feel like it's one way relationship. Did I give and you so, the when in doubt, focus out exercise when we got on that call six months ago? It might have been something along that, uh, along those lines. I don't know if that's exactly what it was called, but I, you seem to have an answer at the ready. So I imagine it's something that you do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, man. I, yes, I remember the call. I remember where I was driving over the 241 and I remember the feeling. And I think if I remember correctly, um, I described this this mechanic, the, um, this tool that I deploy whenever I'm feeling in the pea soup. I don't know a better way to put it. And it's when in doubt, focus out. And when you're in the darkest of the dumps, find someone that you can serve, that you can literally yeah. guide, mentor, train, or develop. And I really think that is the foundation of becoming and being a high value man from the capacity of if you can give when you're at your darkest, your deepest, and you're most afraid inside the project, you look to your left, you look to your right, you look in front of you, behind you. How can I serve and show up for those men around me? That's yeah. the pivotal moment. Yeah. And- you know, as we're continuing to riff on this, I mean, when we when we think about the term value, value is applied to an object or a thing based on the perception of those that will be willing to pay for it. Ooh. Right? I mean, that's yeah. what value is. Mm. Right. So if I have something that you want, this water bottle, and you have a million of these water bottles, it's not gonna it's not gonna cost like mm. it's not that valuable to you. Mm-hmm. Um, and so for me, it's the hunt. In those insights and the application of those insights and the application of giving to others Mm. in a way that's unique and not commoditized and personalized. And that gives me value. That serves my soul. That makes me create at least a little gravity on the spinning rock uh, that we have and, and makes the people around me better. And hopefully they make the people around them better. And I think that this is, that's what this is all about, brother. Jake Blanchard. I love man. Where can people find you? Oh man, you can find me on Instagram. I'm at Jake in Blanchard uh, on Instagram. Uh, you check out my consulting firm at deltapedlife.com. Who would be a good prospect for that consult- consulting firm? Like uh, yeah, mid- mid-size uh, organizations. Uh, typically, I work with companies that are doing uh, in the eight to nine figures, sometimes in the billions. Um, and you know, I do What are their trans- problems? Um, their problems are usually a department or a um, overarching strategic imperative uh, that needs to get aligned to the business. So like, hey, we want to grow X amount of percent or hey, we're having these supply chain issues or hey, we have this group of project managers, but for some reason, our projects don't move. Can you come in and help us figure this out? And then I work with those teams. I put in some frameworks and some systems or I do some of that nerdy work in the supply chain space uh, to help de-risk or or, uh, better serve uh, their business objectives and reduce their operating expense. I love that. I love that. So if you are a, a C-level and higher kind of executive yeah. and, you're, and you're dealing with some operational system margin issues, like Jake Blanchard's your guy. Yeah, absolutely. Love absolutely, it. man. I, I love it. I, I, I love to go out and compete with the big dogs. You know, there's some, there's some of those, uh, the big five consulting firms out there that uh, um, folks like Deloitte and Accenture, et cetera, that have done just such a great job uh, in that space. And that's what I'm chasing, man. That's what I'm trying to build. So I mean, yeah. it's, uh, it's growing every year. And a lot of it has to do with the way that, uh, or most of it has to do with the way that I'm showing up these days. Bro. Um, Aaron, I can't thank you enough, man. I know uh, you have such, such humility, uh, around the impact that you make in people's lives. But man, I, I, I meeting you was a gift and having you in my life and my circle is a gift. Uh, and this conversation is a gift, man. So thank you again so much for everything you've done to show me who I could be. 
And I appreciate that, Jake. And the, the gift is uh, one that we're going to keep on giving because at the end of the day, you are, I am high value men. And we know that this is just the beginning. We are on a mission to make the world a better place by becoming and being better men, being the leaders and lighthouses that the world needs. Guys, if you enjoyed this episode, do us a big favor and go follow Jake Blanchard. Give his podcast a rating, a five-star review. Give him some love and do us a favor as well. Share this episode with a friend. If you know of anyone that's in the consulting space, Space that needs some help to optimize and systematize and do all those things that make a business better and want someone tenacious, a fucking grappler like this dude that's going to fight hard for you and your business, a uh, heart of gold, then there's no one better than Jake Blanchard. Appreciate you guys. Much love. Many blessings. We'll talk soon. Boom. Boom.